to thank the management of Sugars and Chemical Industries Limited for giving us the opportunity to host their Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. From the management team we have with us today, Mr. Rajesh Rathi, Managing Director, and Mr. Neenkan Banatu, Chief Financial Officer. Without further ado, I would like to hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks, post which will open the forum for a Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Robert Security and Mr. Tejas for hosting our earnings call. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sudarshan's Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. Our investor presentation has been uploaded on the stock exchange for your ready reference. I would like to take you through the financial highlights for this quarter. On the overall basis, it has been a strong performance in the quarter four of the current financial year FY23, both on the sales and margin side, compared to the challenging quarters of Q2 and Q3 of this current financial year. On the quarterly performance, on a consolidated basis for the quarter, total income from operations stood at rupees 691 crore as compared to rupees 627 crore for the same period last year higher by 10% year on year. EBITDA for the quarter stood at rupees 85 crore compared to rupees 86 crore in Q4 FY22 and EBITDA margin stood at 12.3 compared to 30.7% over the same period last year. Profit after tax stood at rupees 33 crore as compared to rupees 45 crore for the same period last year. Sequentially, Revenue has grown by 31% at Rs. 691 crore compared to Rs. 528 crore of Q3 FY23 and EBITDA has grown by 100 plus percentage to 85 crore compared to Rs. 42 crore of Q3 FY23 with an improvement in EBITDA margin from 7.9% in Q3 to 12.3% in Q4 FY23. On a yearly basis, total income from operation on a consolidated basis stood at Rs. 2302 crore versus Rs. 2201 crore in FY22, a growth of around 5%. EBITDA for the period ending 31st March 23 is at Rs. 211 crore compared to 275 crore last year. And EBITDA margin on a yearly basis is at 9.2% versus 12.5% over the same period last year. Fat is at rupees 45 crore compared to rupees 130 crore for the same period in the last year. Now going into the details of our pigment business, Q4 FY23 has been the strong quarter for us. For the Q4 FY23, the income from operations stood at Rs. 594 crore compared to Rs. 558 crore for the same period last year, growth of 6% year on year. On a sequential basis, revenue is higher by 23% compared to Rs. 483 crore of sales revenue in Q3 FY23. India sales for the quarter is at Rs. 301 crore compared to Rs. 286 crore in the same period last year. On a sequential basis, India sales is higher by 20% compared to Rs. 251 crore of Q3 FY23. Exports for the quarter were at Rs. 293 crore compared to Rs. 272 crore last year, higher by 8% year on year. On a sequential basis, revenue is higher by 26% compared to Rs. 232 crore of the Q3 FY23. In both domestic and export markets, we have seen early sign of demand revival in both plastic and coating segments. The specialty pigment sales stood at Rs. 412 crore as compared to 388 crore for the previous year same quarter, 6% higher year on year. On a sequential basis, the revenue grew by 21% compared to Rs. 340 crore in Q3 of the current financial year. Non-speciality sales for the quarter stood at Rs. 181 crore as compared to Rs. 171 crore for the same period last year, while on a sequential basis, revenue grew by 27% compared to 143 crore in Q3 FY23. Gross margin for the pigment business for the quarter stood at 41.5% compared to 41% for the same period last year. 
Comparing with the sequential quarter, it shows improvement over Q3, which was at 40%. After experiencing the volatility in the raw material prices for first three quarters, we are seeing softening of the RM prices now in Q4 FY23 due to drop in basic cost drivers such as crude oil, benzene, toluene, etc. This should help us in stabilizing the gross margin levels. Apart from the raw material costs, we are seeing softening of the energy costs in Q4 and also reduction in the coal prices, which should benefit manufacturing costs in the coming quarters. Logistics costs are also coming off from the peak level seen earlier, and we expect this trend to continue. EBITDA for the quarter stood at Rs. 73 crore in Q4 FY23 as compared to Rs. 76 crore for the previous year, same quarter. EBITDA margin is at 12.3% compared to 13.7% over the same period last year. Sequentially, EBITDA has grown uh, compared to Rs. 38 crore in Q3 of the last year. EBITDA margin shows the improvement over sequential quarter which reported at 7.8% in Q3 at 23 Given the difficult external environment, management has aggressively focused on the cost reduction initiatives throughout the year. Overall increase in the sales, softening of the RN, raw materials, other costs, aggressive push on the cost reduction has helped us in increasing the margin and EBITDA for the quarter and the BD. However, we will have to continue with the pricing decisions with the calibrated approach to balance on the volume growth. We have also worked extensively on the reduction of the working capital, especially on the inventory level, accounts receivable, relieving the free cash flow, which has helped us in reducing the working capital debt level. On the yearly performance, uh, yearly basis, Total income from operations stood at Rs. 2,079 crore for the pigment business versus 2,020 crore in the same period last year, a growth of around 3%. EBITDA for the period ending 31st March 23 is at 194 crore compared to Rs. 269 crore last year, and the margin is at 9.3% versus 13.3% over the same period last year. A recent update on land monetization. The company has, on 6 April 23, executed deed of convenience with Birla Estate Private Limited to, to sell company's freehold, clear, marketable, title land, and measuring 5.76 acres, along with the structures thereon, located at 162 Wellesley Road, Pune 01, for a total net consideration of 356 crore. The company has completed the sale transaction and company plans to strengthen the balance sheet from the proceeds uh, arising out of this transaction. On the capex side, uh, uh, let me inform you the status of the capex project which will drive the company's future growth. I am happy to inform you that we have successfully commissioned all the capex projects in this financial year. With this, we have transformed our product portfolio with one of the widest and most comprehensive product range in the industry. For the new product line, we are getting good response from the customers and these products are at advanced stage of evaluation. Given the current global scenario, we expect a slow ramp up in the short term, but we remain confident in the mid-term cap mid -term, that this capex will accrue the expected benefit. So to summarize, there are many positive tailwinds from the external side, like consolidation of top players in the industry, supply description from the prominent player in the North America, emergence of India as a key global manufacturing industry, and softening of the raw material prices and energy costs, which will be positive for the company. At the same time, we are very well prepared internally with all the capex projects being commissioned, with wider range of product portfolio, cost efficient operation, and capacity to quickly ramp up the sales. To summarize, the year has been challenging for pigment industry and us on sales as well as the margin front. We have seen these pressures in the first three quarters of the current financial year. Q4 FY23 shows strong revival and performance on overall business and financial parameters. We are confident in our growth journey 
and look forward to continuing the same and delivering the value to all our stakeholders. With this, now I open the floor for question and question. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question comes from Sanjesh Jain with ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. I uh, have a few questions. The first on the China competition, uh, we have been hearing from the other chemical company that uh, China is getting aggressive, their domestic <laughs> consumption has slowed down. And uh, that has led to a lot more aggressive Chinese operator uh, for the export market. And now that the commodity is also softening and demand even on the global side doesn't look very exciting. Considering all this situation, uh, how should we expect FY24 for Sudarshan Chemical? So, um, so I think uh, you know China. Uh, China, uh, if you compare the last year, last year China's demand was uh, you know at the lowest, right? Due to the lockdowns, uh, due to the various lockdowns, etc. And there was surplus production. So that trend, I think, has improved. But at the same time, you're right. We don't see that ramp up happening on that. The second thing which has happened is there has been anti-dumping duties. Uh, posted uh, post in China for given green pigments from India. So both, uh, I think, from a perspective of India supplying blue green pigments into uh, China, that's become a concern for the entire industry. And China's surplus, uh, whatever they have in terms of supplies, they've been kind of, uh, um, I would say, supplying at very aggressive costs. Uh, in Asia and other regions. Um, so I feel, uh, you know, uh, from a perspective of last year, the situation is slightly better, but the situation still remains uh, uh, concerning. And that's where we differentiate ourselves with some of our product portfolio and the services which we offer uh, 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 to our end customers. Fair enough. So, so considering that our all the CAPEX program are completed and uh, uh, commodity prices have also eased out. Uh, how should we see the revenue growth for FY24? Uh, can we achieve a 20% growth considering that we had a very soft quarter, soft year in FY23? Do, do you see a challenge to that? And uh, again, uh, you, you did mention that you have seen revival in both coating and plastic segments. I think that gives a little bit of confidence, but purely from the sales perspective, is a 20% kind of a growth really achievable? So I think, sir, from an uh, external tail tailwind perspective, uh, we have very good tailwinds, as uh, Natuji explained uh, in the uh, conference call. A lot of, you know, top players consolidating, a little bit internally focus, a uh, lot of focus on India as a key uh, uh, hub. At the same time, we are also well prepared with our capexes and the product portfolio going. So we do expect. Uh, uh, I do not know. I, you know, I can't uh, give the several uncertainties in the market. I can't give you a figure saying that this is what it is. But we do ex we do feel that the worst is over, and we should be able to kind of uh, move on from here in the right direction. Fair enough, sir. Uh, next on the <clears throat> margin perspective, first on the gross margin, second on the other expenses. Uh, Gross margin on a consolidated basis, we are at 42%, and pigment, you mentioned that we are at 41.5. Historically, we were at anywhere between 43 to 44%. So, that 200 basis point increment can be achieved with this uh, uh, softening in commodity. Is that a right understanding? Second, on the other expenses, uh, there has been a drop in coal prices, freight costs, and everything. But from our other expenses perspective, it, it, it still shows a very high inflation of 25-26%. Uh, 
for a revenue growth of 10%. Can you help us reconcile us the other expenses? Yeah, thank you. So, we can hear. So, on the gross margin perspective, yes, what we have seen is the gross margin of 43.5 in the year of 21 when there were a normalized, uh, you know, uh, the cost consideration. What we are now seeing in the current quarter, the gross margin of 41.5% compared to the earlier quarters, which were at around 40 or sub 40. We expect that this stabilization in the raw material cost, uh, uh, you know, uh, and one is the softening and second is the stabilization in the raw material prices should help us because earlier we have seen it has been not only the inflation but the timing uh, during the quarter also we used to get the disruption in the raw material prices. Given the uh, stable outlook, I expect that this particular drop margin trend should continue. Uh, it also is also the impact on, uh, you know, earlier we have seen in the couple of quarters, the demand pressure and the pricing pressure due to that, wherein the certain pass-throughs were difficult. Uh, with the current revival in the demand, we, ex we expect that this level should get stabilized and we should get some uptake in the coming quarter if the raw material prices remain at the same level. On the other extent side, while I agree with your observation on totality, this is the company has done, uh, uh, you know, uh, aggressive cost push in terms of the various levers. Couple of factors which have impacted during the year, one is on the forex exchange block size, which is around 16 crores, which has been published in the note. This is due to our, uh, you know, the capex loan, and it is more structural, and uh, you know, we monitor it based on our XRR basis, so we are aware of those, uh, you know, variability in the foreign exchange. Second factor also which has impacted during the quarter and overall during the year is our eco business has also shown a good growth and the price expenses related to that has gone up uh, during the quarter as well as the uh, corresponding year. And the third factor which has also impacted during this particular year is the rising coal cost. So while we saw the stabilization coming in the quarter four, but the coal costs predominantly were higher in the first three quarters, so which has also impacted uh, that variability in the other costs. While we have taken a lot of measures in controlling the other expenses, which are more of a discretionary. Second, the company has uh, to reach out the uh, to reach out to the customer and key customer engagement and key account management. We have also uh, started investing in what I can say as a good business expenditure, which is travel as well as the exhibition cost. So we have reached out uh, and we have participated in a couple of exhibitions in the last quarter uh, and uh, in the history of this financial year. So with this, uh, uh, the other expenses is on a slightly higher side, but uh, these are more of a structural and which are from the long-term perspective. For next year, they should significantly normalize, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Sanjay, uh, while there has been a focus on the cost reduction which helped us during this year, the focus remains constant. Uh, we would like to uh, cut the unnecessary fat in the system in terms of the fixed cost, whether it is a fixed or variable. The uh, operation, manufacturing operation has become very cost efficient and uh, we will continue that trend. We, are, we, are, we will be prudent in that matter. Fair enough. So my last set of question is on the new product contribution. Uh, now that we have uh, uh, commissioned the papers, uh, uh, what is the number of products we anticipate and what is the contribution we expect in next two years from the new product in our overall revenue? And what is the capacity utilization uh, as of FY4 for us? And what is the CAPEX plan for FY24? And that, these are my last questions. Thank you. So, uh, I think from a CapEx perspective, we've completed our CapEx plan completely. We don't expect uh, any CapEx, excepting the regular maintenance CapEx or, uh, or any minor uh, CapEx coming up. But otherwise, the CapEx program is uh, full on. Uh, as Matuji uh, explained uh, in the note, I think all our products are put to use now, right? So, several chemistries have been launched. 
uh, whether it's the Wally 23 new product, Yellow 138 we had uh, introduced earlier, but various versions we've launched through years. CICP uh, complex for uh, pigment CICP we've uh, uh, launched, um, solventized we've launched. So all our product portfolio now is complete and we've launched this. Um, we expect, uh, you know, we are already seeing a good attraction for this uh, product line. Um, we in the in the very in the short term we expect a little slower ramp up given the economic slowdown, but we are very confident uh, you know in the three year four year horizon we should be able to meet our, our mid term horizon we should be able to meet okay. our uh, uh, capex uh, uh, targets. And the capacity utilization. So uh, right now we've ramped up uh, our capacities and we're ready to go. I think right now we're not publishing from a competitive sensitive uh, information, but we have enough uh, headroom to grow, sir, with the capex program. That, that's all my question, and uh, thank you for answering all of them patiently and especially for coming to us. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ankur Perival with Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi Rakiji. Congratulations for a for a good rebound and uh, you know in the numbers this time. Uh, so okay, so uh, starting uh, continuing with the with the product side, uh, you did mention uh, you know launch of many products there. Uh, from a stability perspective, have we reached a stable state here, or there could be some sort of you know time taken uh, for these products? So, uh, so we've launched these products, sir. Now it's the time to uh, get the approvals and we ramp up sales, uh, ramp up sales on that, right? So, from from an internal perspective, we are all ready now. Now it's all getting approvals and pushing the products into the market. Was that your question, Uncle? Yeah, yeah. So from from a technicality, teething trouble, you know, typically initially yeah. it may take time for the product to stabilize. That part is done. It's only the product approval. Yes, yes, yes sir. absolutely, sir. Absolutely. And, right. and how much time? And also, second question related to that, you know, from a product positioning or the target market perspective, uh, are large part of these products domestic market oriented or international? And how much time will it take, you know, in both the geographies? For the approval? So it's a it's a global product range. And it's a global product range, and uh, we expect to realize the benefits between three to four years. So, Uncle uh, Nilkan, so as as Mr. Rati mentioned, uh, these are the niche products, and as we already mentioned earlier, these are into the specialty uh, pigment side. So, the market will be both in domestic as well as the export market. Slightly, the uh, speed will be on the export side. As uh, Mr. Rati uh, also explained, technically these products are proven. It is the customer approval. Are we are in the process of getting that? Couple of them are on board. So uh, it will help us in both the markets going forward. Sure. Uh, just on the product approval timelines. Uh, so you know, I, I understand different products may be different, but broadly a range, uh, you know, will be helpful. So, sir, uh, uh, the approval time kind of varies between three months to six months, right? And uh, so we started we started this process. Uh, what we are saying is, sir, the ramp up earlier expected uh, would be slightly slower given the slowdown uh, uh, in the market. So, uh, from that perspective, especially uh, some geographies like Europe, uh, etc., we see a slightly lesser uptake than what we were expecting initially, but that should soon, uh, we should see, soon see a ramp up in the midterm side given the tailwinds which we have. Sure. Yeah, that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, on the on the margin front, uh, you know, we have seen a, a good jump on a Q on Q uh, basis as well. Uh, just trying to understand uh, the earlier delays in RM inflation or the pricing led discounts that we were facing earlier. Uh, both of them are largely through, <clears throat> and now there could be some benefits of RM deflation, let's say starting next quarter. 
uh, and good high milk and here. So I agree with you. So uh, with softening of the RN prices and with the stable RN environment, uh, given that we also have uh, the uh, you know the good Q4 wherein our sales number were higher, uh, the uh, effect of this RN fresh purchasing or new pricing should come in, and which we are seeing in Q4 also. And if, if this trend continues, uh, we expect that this will get stabilized, and we should see the normalized growth margin going forward. And and this normalized will be the historical uh, average of around 42, 43 percent odd. Uh, yeah, if you really see historically, we were in the range of you know if you uh, uh, if you see from the 19 to 22, we were in the range of you know 41 half to 43 half. Uh, I would like to have the number midway, maybe 42 and 42 and half. So maybe a quarter, maybe a hundred basis points further. Uh, but it will take uh, it will take uh, you know time to go to that level. I am right now expecting the current level of the growth margin to sustain for a quarter. Uh, as we move along with the new inventory coming in and all that, we should be at the midpoint level. Sure, sure, Nadoji. And uh, the last bit from my side, uh, for the quarter specifically, uh, if I look at the console and standalone, uh, which is, uh, you know, the subsidiary revenue had seen a pretty sharp jump. Uh, so could you help us understand what exactly are these subsidiary revenues for? These are largely the marketing, uh, you know, entities that we have. And the correspondingly, the overheads are also slightly elevated here. So uh, just to clarify on that. Uh, yeah, so I'm telling you, if you really see the performance on the segment side, uh, so there has been the increase in the, uh, you know, Rico business revenue from 44 crore to 96 crore on the consolidated basis, while our trading arms in, uh, you know, uh, USA, Mexico, and to some extent Europe also has helped us in uh, revival of the demand there, and uh, overall growth on the following subsidies has been also good in Q4. In terms of the other expenses which have been elevated, as I mentioned earlier, Rico being a site oriented business into the you know capital good industry, uh, with the revenue getting doubled uh, between Q3 and Q4, there has been some ramp up in the cost there. And couple of spend which we did in the Q4 on the exhibition and reaching out to the customer has slightly given me the elevated, elevated Q4 cost. But we see it should get normalized in the coming quarters. Sure, Natoji. That's helpful. Thank you and uh, all the best. Thank you. Our next question comes from Amar Moria with Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. So thanks a lot for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions from my team. Firstly, sir, what would be the volume growth for us in this quarter? Amar, can you, uh, Milton, can you please volume growth? Volume growth. What would be the volume growth? Am I, am I audible to you? So, uh, so Amar, uh, hi, Milton here. So, normally, uh, we, we are not published yet the volume data, but uh, just to give you the directional number, the growth has been good in terms of the volume pickup compared to the Q3. Achha, we have seen the volume pickup compared to the Q3. Okay. Yes. And this volume pickup was sir, largely, let's say, from uh, the coating segment or from your, uh, basically, the plastic segment. So, uh, Amar, uh, this volume pickup uh, or volume growth we have seen in both the markets, domestic as well as export, and in both predominant segments, which are plastic and coating, both. Okay, with the plastic segment, what we had earlier also said in the uh, couple of quarters, Q1, Q2, wherein we have seen that there was a lot of raw material variability in the plastic segment, which was on, on polymer side. It was the variability in the prices, and second was the availability. And with the scenario wherein the raw material prices were very much elevated, the uh, master batch manufacturer uh, used to hold their buying decision, which we had seen in the earlier quarters. Now, with the stabilization in the raw material prices and with the stable outlook, we have seen the pickup in the plastic segment, and we expect this to continue. Okay. And sir, in the coating, the coating is largely linked to, linked to the automobile or this is the decorative coating, let's say in the export perspective? 
it is in the board slightly the tilt is on a higher side as far as the decorative coating is concerned uh, both in global market also yes sir okay. perfect sir thank you sir thank you thanks thank you thank you our next question comes from nitesh dut with prabhudas leeladar please go ahead uh, yeah uh, hi uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity uh, so my first question is uh, on the market share so uh, for for few years now as a presentation our domestic market share is remain uh, constant at around 35% so uh, why is it uh, you know that we not been able to gain market share uh despite the increased focus towards uh, pigment uh, business over the years and uh, will this increase uh, especially with the large capex that has been put on ground over the last couple of years so i think uh, from a domestic market what we are able to gain is more on the product uh, specialty product side uh, there is the uh, serious competition on some of the commodity uh, products uh where uh, so though we lose on that side we are able to gain on the specialty product side and i think that will con- uh, we will continue our trend towards focusing on the specialty sites we do see uh, good tailwinds coming in with lot of investment in the paint uh, section which uh, in the paint uh, manufacturing area and we should, we would be you know we are really focusing on uh, uh, you know uh, get participating in that group uh, on that group so so thanks that helpful uh, another question is uh, you know whether there is a meaningful difference between uh, the pigments which you sell in the domestic market uh, and that in exports uh, uh, in terms of end applications uh, and you know and the pricing of uh, the products so sir uh, i mean some of the product portfolio is uh, so i uh, e- even the indian market is changing where a lot of specialty products are getting used but the percentage of usage uh, in some of the uh, uh, you know uh, some of the advanced economies i would say uh, is more uh, there and that's how the product port- uh, i would say the product mix changes and uh, certain certain product range we do not take it globally right some of the inorganic uh, chrome pigments uh, or the iron oxide pigments etc we do not sell these globally we sell only in india all right uh, that's all so thank you so much and all the best thank you our next question comes from gagan dikshit with lara capital please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question sir so uh, i see the quarterly trend so uh, so looks like your specialty uh, this revenue on the quarter quarter basis includes almost 70 crore something uh, while i see similar growth in the this export revenue also this almost 60 crore plus so can i say to assume that uh, this mostly the your specialty is uh, growth is driven by the export market revival that's more or, or you say relatively as compared to domestic Uh, hi, it's uh, an instant here. Uh, see, if I see the domestic and export split, which is 51-49 percent, and as you mentioned, there has been a 60 crore growth in the export quarter and quarter. Similar way, we have seen 50 crore in the Q3 to Q4 for the domestic. Uh, the specialty and non-specialty tilts remain between 69 and 31 percent uh, at the basket. and we see this particular uh, growth coming in from both the market uh, which is domestic as well as export as mr rathi mentioned couple of inorganic products are not uh, uh, you know we marketed in those export market because of the regulation we uh, see slight tilt in the export market on the specialty side thanks sir uh, which are the export market uh, you see uh, more revival because as i see in the presentation that you mentioned still the problems still going on in the europe uh, this demand is flat uh, this and also there the china issues also so uh, so uh, if you can indicate that uh, i mean uh, overall just on the quarter quarter basis or why why this where uh, i mean the demand uh, is more uh, this ramping up as compared to others 
I think, sir, as a uh, long-term trend, we see uh, a great potential in the Americas, uh, even the South American market, which we are also focusing uh, and driving our growth. There are several uh, initiatives which should really help us in the midterm, including Europe. For example, uh, Europe, we've onboarded uh, BSS, Shakti, BTC as a distributor. And, uh, you know, it all, you know, it also talks about uh, our, uh, it's also a testimony of we being a reliable and high quality supplier that uh, BSF BTC has taken us on board. And this will definitely help us strengthen our, uh, you know, midterm perspectives and reaching out to uh, small and medium customers, right? So each geography, I would say, has, uh, as the area, it depends on how it plays out, right? So with Europe, uh, you know, probably demand rising, I think these two areas should help us. Americas, we are driving uh, uh, growth. Um, so these are some of the areas uh, which uh, uh, we are going. Uh, in Japan, the digital link market is, and Korea, the digital link market is very favorable, which we are selling some of our products in the digital links, uh, and we are ramping up our sales there. Uh, sir, uh, regarding the China competition in the export market, so typically uh, this uh, uh, on the pricing front, uh, typically uh, is there any uh, Chinese have the price advantage or they are at, at par with your product prices? Sir, it depends on the product range. There is definitely a product range where uh, you know we are not able to compete, uh, especially in some of the commodity uh, areas, right? So those are the areas where we, you know, with China, we are not able to compete. On the other specialty areas, uh, if uh, the presence of Chinese is less, but we are able to compete on those areas. Okay, that, that's from my side. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Our next question comes from Rohit Nagraj with Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. <laughs> Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, so first question is uh, on the speciality and non-speciality mix. So currently uh, you mentioned it's 59 to 41. Uh, over the next three years, once we enter uh, the, uh, the newer capex of 750 crores, uh, will this uh, mix change more towards Charlie, say, 75, 25, or what is your perspective? Thank you. Hi, Raj Nilkant here. Uh, uh, so, uh, with respect to the speciality and non-speciality test, which is at around 69 and 31% currently, with the CAPEX program, which is commissioned and major focus is on the speciality side, uh, we expect this particular test will be, uh, uh, will be on the speciality side, wherein the speciality current uh, you know, percentage in terms of the revenue should move up from 69%. Uh, I would not like to put the number as this, but it should be uh, around, uh, you know, on a higher side compared to what we have seen now come, uh, with respect to the speciality. So upward direction will be there. Second thing is also uh, between India and domestic, what we have seen 51 and 49, which is fairly a balanced mix, with this capex being uh, commissioned, the tilt also should slightly move on the export side going forward. Right, uh, this is helpful. And second question is particularly on the balance sheet side. So we have seen a very strong improvement in working capital to 74 days from 96 for days. So earlier probably the range was closer to 90 to 100 days. Uh, is this 75 days of working capital sustainable going forward? And a uh, second question is, uh, given that uh, we have received uh, the money from land sale, uh, what is the kind of debt reduction that we expect uh, by FY24? Thank you. Thanks, Rohit. So on the working capital side, as you have rightly mentioned, we are at now 74 days of the next working capital cycle. And uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, the great work done by the team internally to reduce the inventories and also to make the operation lean and with the collection of the account receivable. Uh, if you really see our net working capital as a percentage to sale is at around 20%. And historically, we used to operate between 24 to 25% earlier. 
and uh, earlier we indicated as a management that we would like to go gradually to the 20% level and we were targeting 22% as one of the midway to get into that particular uh, uh, aspiration level. Uh, but happy to share that we are at around 20% at the year end. While there may be certain uh, variability in this particular percentage during the year based on the raw material supplies, availabilities, maybe some study it call, we, we expect and we will work towards maintaining this level plus minus 1%. That is something I can look at. Uh, and that has also helped during this particular year for the debt number. Despite the EBITDA being down by 70, 80 crore, our debt number uh, are, are flat, uh, uh, which is at 794, 796 crore in terms of the net debt. Uh, uh, in, uh, uh, regarding your second question on the land monetization, so yes, uh, this land monetization will help us in improving our balance sheet. Uh, currently, we are at around 794 crore of the number. If I see the net bid, if I consider this 300 plus crore of you know land monetization, we are at closer to 500 crore. So we will, we, we as a management have taken a call to uh, you know reduce the bid over a period, and we should be more leaner in the next year as far as the bid numbers are concerned. Just one clarification, uh, during FY23, uh, were, were there any one-time consultancy charges for the projects which were undertaken and which will not be recurring in FY24? Uh, come again, Roy. Uh, uh, any, any consultancy charges that uh, we had paid for any third-party consultant? I think we were working on the... Uh, margin improvement projects uh, uh, with some of the external consultants. So is there any uh, uh, one, I mean, uh, one-time expense uh, for those consulting charges during FY23 and which may not recur uh, incrementally? Yeah. So we did not have any uh, one-time or consultancy charges on the margin improvement etc. in the current financial year FY23. Uh, so there was no, there was no one-time there. Uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions and best of luck, sir. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Our next question comes from Archit Joshi with BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just one question. Uh, so the market leader uh, has kind of indicated that there are a couple of areas where uh, there's there's been an improvement and the outlook in uh, cosmetics and displays as a category within which pigments are used that showing some some signs of revival uh, i just wanted to understand if we have uh, any um, uh, exposure to these uh, uh, these industries where we can see some some revival globally uh, also uh, they have they have mentioned that uh, some of the key categories like coatings plastics and printing ink are still under uh, reeling under a lot of pressure with respect to um, uh, inventory adjustment. Uh, in in our view, when do we see this uh, 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 reversing uh, for 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 us specifically? Uh, if even if it's not for the industry, that's it, sir. Thank you. So I think for us, yes, uh, uh, cosmetic and displays uh, are uh, you know the links are an important uh, segment for our growth too. However, if you look at the market size. Uh, compared to the uh, you know entire market size, these two market sizes are quite small uh, uh, compared to you know the percentage to the total market. And uh, you know, so though we are we'll be going there, they, you know whether they have a significant impact on our overall uh, perspective is the question. But these are very important segments, strategic segments for us to grow. Um, with this, uh, sir, I think. Uh, uh, there are, uh, you know, so it's a comparative area, and we have seen some improvements compared to last year on the uh, demand side from uh, these the three traditional uh, industrial sectors which you spoke about. And uh, so we do believe that, uh, you know, uh, the worst in demand uh, things are over, and there is a gradual improvement which is coming up. 
Uh, understood, sir. Uh, sir, while you say that the displays or the cosmetics, uh, uh, you know, these these categories are pretty small in the overall scheme of things, uh, would you, uh, can you throw some light on this displays business uh, or the displays industry? Where exactly are these pigments used? I mean, from the application perspective, uh, you know, is it is it more towards uh, electronics in laptops or, you know, with smartphones growing quite significantly? Uh, would this be a growing area going ahead? Uh, if you can share some of your insights on this segment. Thank you. So, so digital links uh, is an important, uh, this, is, this comes under digital links. And under digital links, uh, you know, there are two segments. One is... Uh, uh, the inject, the toners, and displays, uh, widespread uh, displays. So overall perspective, uh, uh, you know, these are the areas where these uh, products uh, uh, go. Uh, we think it's a strategic area, which is uh, a good growth area. Though the entire volume is uh, this, the margins will also be better, and that's how we had embarked on this. All our development work in this area was completed between our R&D in India and Germany lab, and our product range is uh, completely ready. And these are the products which we are really selling into Japan and Korea now. And we have several approvals in this area. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thanks, and all the best. Thank you. Our next question comes from Arthur with ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. The opportunity. So, just two questions. One, uh, what would be our uh, capex number for next year uh, in terms of range, ballpark range? Uh, if you so, I think Milton here, so as we mentioned, uh, uh, the majority of the capex program is over, and uh, this year will be the stabilization phase for us. So we will only continue with the sustenance and the maintenance capex. We'd not like to put the number, but it will not be the most significant. Our engineering business, uh, which was a small portion, has been ramping up well. So uh, any evaluation to uh, you know eventually sell it, or any thoughts on that? How should one think, given it's non-core? So, uh, yes, so there has been a revival in the Rico business. Uh, the board is also looking at, uh, you know, this revival and uh, this year has, has, has earmarked in terms of the turn, turnaround compared to the last year. So, board will take uh, an opportunate time the decision regarding that. As of now, there is no discussion in terms of the... Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Arthur, do you have any questions for the management? No, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Madhav Marda with FIL. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning. Thank you so much for your time once again. Uh, but the sense I'm getting is you're sounding much more confident on uh, ramping up the new capacity uh, versus earlier, and probably seems like there could be. Uh, some like decent market share gain opportunities, which has been the thought process in Europe, South America, North America. Is that the right understanding I'm having that uh, finally all this consolidation which is happening in the pigment industry uh, and our new capex coming in, product portfolio expanding. Now all of those things are coming together and now we should see like uh, steady growth. Of course, macro is something not in our control, but what's in our control seems like things are falling into place. Is that is that the right sense I'm getting? I think uh, well summarized. Like you said, uh, so we were always very confident about our capex program, right? That was the area of transformation for the company, in order for its growth uh, and uh, sustain, you know, good sustainable growth, right? So uh, you know, given that we had so many headwinds in the last two years when we began the capex program, uh, uh, it you know uh, we did face it. Uh, very well, I think, and we have now kind of completed the whole capex program. We should, uh, we, uh, we, we do feel that uh, uh, the ramp up will be there. The first 
Um, first, uh, you know, the initial part may be a little tougher because of the slowdown, but I think, uh, uh, you know, given that uh, there has been no dirt of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, attracting the customer for the product line. So there's a lot of full there, right? How we ramp up is the uh, real question. The short term is, is a little bit of a concern, but I think overall, in the overall midterm period, we are very confident that we should meet our capex benefit targets. Understood, understood, yeah. And then the second question was, you know, seems like our uh, gross margin, uh, like Mr. Nishan also said that one quarter more maybe, and then we should see some bit more of an uptake on the gross margin side. And even on the fixed cost side, you know, there has been obviously like high trade cost, I mean, uh, on the other expenses, um, and then high coal prices. So all these things, I mean, and we've always like, if I look uh, before COVID, we used to be the 14, 15% EBITDA margin range. Uh, so do you think we can get back there towards the end of uh, FI24 as we approach like quarter three, quarter four? Uh, of course, given uh, uh, like macro remaining and inflation remaining where it is, uh, on a steady set basis, our margins can see some more uptick from gross margins and a little bit more on the other cost side. Madam, so recently, uh, uh, so uh, as I mentioned, yes, with the gross margin stabilization currently at 41.5 percent, with the raw material stabilization and you know the stable outlook, I expect that this trend should continue and should sustain. Uh, uh, and if it continues, then definitely it will def uh, reflect in terms of the EBITDA. While we had historically achieved the number of 15% in FI21, even uh, you know the market scenarios, then I uh, would not like to put uh, the number as of now for what is the EBITDA for the next year. But directionally, with this stabilization coming in and uh, you know overall, uh, uh, you know the confidence of volume bounce back. I expect uh, it should help us in improving the EBITDA percentage in in couple of quarters. And the, this last question, the, the land proceeds have already come in, right? Like we've already received the money from, from the land sale? Yes, no, we have received the money. In this financial year, in the financial year, in April. In financial year. Q1. So, so Q1 on this year. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Madam. Thank you. Our next question comes from Chetan Thakur with Ask Investment Managers Limited. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Hi. Hi. So I just wanted to understand more from a medium-term point of view. So we've historically seen your gross profit margin in the range of uh, 41 to 43. Uh, given that uh, the products that we've launched and we filled the basket in, uh, would it be a fair understanding that over a medium term we can add a couple of basis points to this range uh, as those products increase in terms of contribution and that plus the efficiencies will eventually drive uh, the OPM over a more medium term? So uh, directionally, yes. Given the current uh, uh, the range of you know what we have seen earlier 41 to 43 percent more stabilized range of 42 percent where the specialty and non-specialty take was around 6930 with the uh, ramp up and the new product capex which are more in the high performance segment specialty side directionally in the uh, coming year this should give us a better benefit in terms of the growth margin. And the capacities that we set up, fair to assume in three years if things go normally, which we've not seen sometime, but still assuming it goes, uh, most of these capacities would then be utilized. That would be a fair understanding. Uh, absolutely. So given the current scenario, we are, we are expecting that this uh, ramp up will be uh, during three to four years period of time. Absolutely. Sure, sir. Thank you so much and all the very best. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Our next question comes from Janam Gilani with Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. Uh, so I missed the initial part. So could you tell me what was the like what was the amount we received in the land deal? Hi, uh, Janam Milton here. So we have received three fifty six crore uh, in terms of our land monetization. And uh, so, uh, assuming we uh, achieve peak utilization in three to four years, what can we 
our uh, current revenue, like that revenue that can, the peak revenue that can be reached in three to four years uh, uh, with our current capacity. Hello. Uh, how do you know? So, assuming the current, uh, assuming the capacity ramp up from the new product capex and you know the full utilization, we expect that the uh, re revenue with the current normalized rising scenario should be in the range of around 3,000 to 3,300 crores going forward in the uh, next three to four years period of time. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you, sir. Congratulations for a good set of fun. Thank you, Jaina. Thank you. Our next question comes from Jay Ketan Shah with Capital PMS. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, Jay. Can you hear me? Hi. Uh, congratulations yeah. for a good set of numbers. A couple of questions uh, majorly on the specialty side. When you say that you know you are trying to increase the mix to specialty uh, products and already have started the work, what is the approach of the company? Is it more like we choose a sector uh, or a client and then we look at, you know, creating entry barriers using chemistry? Or is it more of a pull from the client saying that, you know, this is the kind of uh, application they are looking at and then you become a helping hand to them? So I just wanted to understand one is that question. And second, uh, like you said, <laughs> Jay, sorry, uh, sorry to disturb you, but was some disturbance. Can you please repeat the question? Sure. Can you can you hear now? Is it clear? I can hear you. Perfect. So when you say that you know the mix between specialty and the not so specialty is going to be leaning more towards specialty, what is the approach of the company? Is it more that you first choose a typical chemistry and try to create entry barriers for the peers, or is it more like the client asks you to make something uh, which is technically challenging in a way you can say in terms of chemistry, which kind of gives you a moat if so, say so? Like what is the approach when you say specialty of the company? Right. So, I think so. Good question, sir. I think when we, you know, three years ago, we embarked on a whole looking at our whole global strategy and how, uh, you know, what's going to differentiate us in the market. Uh, the answer came out very clearly that we have several capabilities which we can exploit. In, and one area was uh, in the uh, differentiated product range because the uh, commodity product range was already very crowded. And, uh, you know, we could see the writing on the walls that the margins in that area is going to reduce. And this is where we are seeing a lot of blood bath, uh, if you look at the thalocyanine or other uh, uh, pigments. So that was the overall strategy to kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, travel the difficult path in creating this, um, uh, creating this product portfolio. And I'm very glad to say that right from scratch to developing the chemistry, to pilot trials, to commercializing this on the plant, putting up the whole plants, this, uh, you know, our internal team has been able to uh, do this. And it's a wide variety of chemistries, right? When we talk about uh, all the product range we are saying, it's not like, you know, uh, in the pigment industry, you have one product which is going to give you like a bullet of 1,000 crores or something, right? It's a very, very broad portfolio where you have to look at. So, so from that being our uh, strategy, then of course, once this was clear uh, in our strategy, then we started engaging with customers on uh, you know what was their uh, pathway. You know, obviously at each stage, lab samples were exchanged, uh, detailed discussions were happening, and this is and we are now right now on the stage uh, where this is got certified into real products where we are engaging with customers now to uh, 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 you know uh, for for these products. Okay, got it. And secondly, I wanted to ask, you said that there is a lot of uh, movement happening in the paint manufacturing sector. So are you guys looking to even uh, tap into the pigment dispersion chemistry, like someone like what uh, Decol Organics or Southernia or Clarion are doing? So are we even looking uh, as, as that as an ancillary stream of revenue or we focus uh, core on can, uh, pigment itself? So uh, pigment dispersion is an important strategy, but we would never compete with our customers, right? And that's how we had exited our master batch business also. 
where we said we want, uh, you know, one of our values is going to be, and it's a close partnership. I mean, how one of the pillars of our differentiation is customer intimacy and building that trust. So we would never compete, uh, in fact, uh, with our customers. You mentioned about South Virginia, a very dear customer to us, and we would never think of competing. But what we do is, on the pigment dispersion side, we, you know, uh, coating companies are all, always making a make or buy a decision. And from that perspective, we are, uh, you know, so that's where uh, we work with the customer to make those product uh, pigment dispersions for them. So that's one segment for coatings for pigment dispersions, but there are uh, specialty applications, uh, you know, uh, where pigment dispersions also go in, and we are again uh, ramping up our product range to reach out there. We've already done that, actually. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for your time, and all the best for the future quarter. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nilkant Natu for closing comments. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Tejas, and thank you, participants, for your time and interest in research and chemical. We remain confident in the long-term prospects of our business, and we look forward to engaging with you again in future. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Dollar Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.